What's up everybody, today I want to talk about one of the best rogue builds for leveling in Season 6, Vessel of Hatred. This uses the new rogue skill, where you spin around throwing out projectiles, just throwing daggers at everyone as fast as possible. Not only that, but we combine this with the new aspect we got this season, called Star Shards, where as these projectiles hit enemies, they shatter again into six more pieces and spread again. And then we top that off with imbuements. We use Shadow and Ice imbuements, and you can alternate these so you always have one active, and then you just hold down the button, you spin around, and you beat the game, and that's it. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the playstyle. How, how does this work? Well, it all plays around Dance of Knives. That's the main ability. So what you'll do is you'll get into a situation. You will use one of your imbuements. You'll use Ice or Shadow imbuement. And then you will use Concealment. This turns you invisible. And it means that your, your next attack will be empowered. It will, it will crit and it will make enemies vulnerable. So that ability you use will be Dance of Knives. So you'll, you'll come out of Concealment and you'll just be spinning around with imbued weapons while everything's vulnerable and you'll just deal crazy damage. On top of this, we can use uh, Dark Shroud. So we have Dark Shroud in our skill tree and we take five points in this, which gives us massive amounts of damage reduction. But we use the Umbrus aspect. So it means we don't even need this on our bar. You don't even need to cast it. That's how easy this build is. You just spin. <laughs> so let's get into it in detail, starting with the skill tree. Okay, let's break down the skill tree. So from the top, we take Puncture. One point here, one point into Enhanced. This is just early game. It's early game ability. Don't worry too much about using it. You're not going to have energy problems. Just use it like your first 15, 20 levels until we get this. That's going to be your main thing, and it's pretty much usable all the time. Uh, but you need two points in to unlock the next section. In the next section, we've got a lot of passives we take. We don't take a core ability, but we do take a lot of passives. Basically, anything where we see crit, we take. Crit chance, crit damage, we take. This is a very crit-focused build. So here, crit strike in an enemy gives 15% movement speed, we take it. And then your critical strike chance increased by 9% with certain abilities, and that works on our main ability, so we take that. Then we take this, uh, three points in close damage reduction. That 18% damage reduction is huge, because we're basically just spinning around in the middle of all the enemies. So those nine points in there are really, really good. Down here, we have our main ability, the dance. You want to put five points into this. This is the one where all our damage funnels into and our aspects are kind of tailored around it. So you definitely want this. Uh, five points in there. Then you want to take this. Every 30 meters you travel, grants more charges of it, which means we can use it more often. And then each one slows enemies has, has a chance to pierce. That works really well with our aspect, the star shards, where the shards can also shatter into more pieces. So this is, this is like our main damage and you pretty much just hold it down. You hold it down and you run through the charges. That's that's kind of how it works. Then you have a, a uh, shadow step here. This is our main movement. Gets you across the map pretty fast, gets you out of problems. And you can also shadow step to, to elites or to, you know, the purple ones that are shielding everyone. And you can just take them out. You can take this and it makes them vulnerable. So you kind of get to them, make them vulnerable, quickly take them out. Then here, when you use it, it reduces its own cooldown. So this is, I wouldn't think of this as a damage, I only put one point in here, it's more of a mobility. Then we take a big bunch of passives here, three points into weapon mastery for increased damage, like crossbows give increased crit, things like that. We move down into here, dazing or stunning an enemy gives crit chance. Down here, increased damage for after evading. And you can put one point into these to unlock these little bonuses, like there's a daze when evading, and then there's a using a healing potion stuns enemies. One point unlocks the, the chance of it happening. I don't think three out of three in it is really needed. As we move down, we take Concealment, one point in here, one point in the Enhanced, and then one point in Subverting. The reason we the reason we use this is what we do is we use our we use our Imbuement, either Shadow or Ice, and then we Conceal, we go Invisible, and then when we break our Concealment with, with our Dance, we will do this look. We will make everything around us vulnerable. So you pop out of the Shadows, you critically hit, and then everything's vulnerable. So all these big damages we're working towards are on vulnerable enemies, which is just a massive damage boost. You take five out of five Dark Shroud. This is our main defensive. You can take points out of here and you can see you only get 8%. I've seen some people run this on one out of five. I would always five out of five this. It goes up to 9.6 times by five with the five shadows is a massive difference. That is so much. And because we use the Umbrus aspect, we don't even need to cast it. This is just free massive damage reduction. One of the best things on the skill tree, in my opinion. And on top of that, you get crit strike chance from it as well. Down here, we take two more passives, increase damage and... Uh, Increase damage to vulnerable enemies. Okay, on the imbuements, we take Shadow and we take Ice. Now, Shadow is really good for AoE. When you hit an enemy, they explode. Then you got this, Enhanced, Increased Damage. And then you take uh, the Primary Explosion makes enemies vulnerable. On the Ice, it's all about building up Chill and Chill Damage. So we build up Chill, makes enemies vulnerable again, and then deals more damage to crowd-controlled enemies and frozen enemies. You can also take three points in here for increased damage to Chilled and Frozen. And a couple of points here, one and one, just for some little bonuses. You don't need these, but I think they're nice little features. We're quite easy on points in this build. 
Three points here, imbued skills gain 9% increased crit strike chance. I've gone for one out of five and one out of five because we're not really worried about the damage so much as the effects that come from them. But you can you can put more points in if you want to take points out and put points in there. On the uh, on the ultimate, I haven't took one. If you're going to take one, I'd recommend Shadow Clone. You can take Shadow Clone and then there's an aspect that when you use an imbuement, your Shadow Clone will use the imbuement, which is quite strong. I used it a little bit while leveling, but I took it out because I think it's better to have more uptime without the ultimate and you don't need the points in the ultimate passives either so we take three points here increase lucky hit chance and then we put one point in here to get to here while at above 50 percent energy you gain 15 percent movement speed this is pretty much all the time this isn't an energy intensive build so that's a lot of movement speed all the time on the key passive victimize lucky hit dealing damage to a vulnerable enemy and we saw earlier we have so many ways to make enemies vulnerable as a 50% chance to cause an explosion, dealing damage of the same type to them and the surrounding enemies. Damage is increased by 120% chance of your Vuln damage bonus. You can see here, straight out of leveling, I've barely upgraded my gear. It's really basic stuff. I'm at 4,400. So yeah, that's that's the build. A lot of things you can change in here if you want to, but this is how I've got it. But yeah, that's the skill tree. Okay, let's talk about the specialization. And I've tried looking through here at the different combo points and, you know, building the combo points and... the different ways we could maybe put things in that could use the combo points and it all just feels like it doesn't win out compared to something else so for me easily inner sight wins inner sight attack enemies to fill the inner sight gauge fill it when full you get unlimited energy not that important but you get 25 percent crit strike chance for four seconds that is massive this is a crit heavy build so anything with crit is a win and this is a win i don't think combo points are that relevant and preparation we don't use an armor if you wanted to use uh, Shadow Clone, maybe that would be good, but easily, easily, this is what I would suggest. Okay, now let's talk about the aspects. I'm going to go over it on the Mobilitics build I've made. I'll, I'll link this down below. It's got everything here that you need, so you can just come back to this whenever you want. But it's easier to show here because you can just see it all at once. And I will say, while leveling, don't stress about always needing to get all of the aspects on all of the time. There's going to be stuff that just doesn't drop while you level. You're just not going to get it, and it's not going to, you're not going to find it and be able to break it down to use it again. And some stuff, you're going to just replace things so fast, it might not feel worth it. But these are the ones I'd recommend. If you find them, equip them. Some are worth putting on, you know, especially the, the Star Shards and the Alchemist are worth putting on at all times. But And if you start doing Torments, it's worth putting them on at all times because you, your gear won't be changing so much. But let's go through them. On the Helmet, Wild Bolt. Every few seconds, distant enemies are pulled in and take more damage. Umbrus Aspect, Crit Strikes have up to a 65% chance to give a free Dark Shroud Shadow. The reason we use this is it means we can take Dark Shroud off of our bar. We crit enough that we just constantly have Dark Shroud on anyway. Edgemaster, skills deal up to 25% increased damage based on your available primary resource. The reason that's so good is because we always have nearly max resource. That's almost a permanent damage increase. Aspect of the Protector is just a little defensive. Wind Striker, when you crit you get movement speed. We're going to be critting a lot. Star Shards, this is where we're spinning around, we're dealing loads of damage, and then our, our projectiles can shatter into six pieces. It's a massive damage boost. Alchemist, Shadow Imbued Skills have a 75% chance to recent explosion, killing enemies. If they're already chilled, deal up to 100% more damage. This is just a massive damage boost. Again, because we're using Shadow and Ice, it's the perfect aspect to put on. Aspect of Volatile Shadows, when a Dark Shroud is removed, trigger an explosion and apply Shadow Imbuement. Uh, unstable Elements, when cast an Imbuement skill, you trigger an explosion. Applying the Imbuement effects, you see here, it's all damage. Everything we're taking here, uh, it, a lot of this is just... Imbuements deal more damage, Imbuements trigger more explosions. So it's all just good to have. Aspect of True Sight, you deal crit strike damage to enemies marked by increased crit strike damage to enemies with Inner Sight. While Inner Sight is full, you gain increased damage. And then finally, using an Agility skill reduces the cooldown of your next Subterfuge skill. Using a Subterfuge skill increases the next damage of your Agility skill. And our, our Dance is a Agility skill and our Concealment is a subterfuge skill so kind of that that works well together as well because we we go in we, we subterfuge and then we dance and we get that damage boost but yeah these are what i would recommend there's flex here rogues have a lot of really good aspects you can move things around if you want but i've tried a lot of different ones this is what i've been settling on and it's working really well i'm pushing torments with this exact build right now and i'll change i'll make an end game build as well but for leveling i would say this covers all the bases and gives you incredible damage incredible clear speed and you have so much defense, you can play pretty carelessly. But yeah, that's that's the build. Okay, let's go over the mercenaries. If you're if this is your first vessel of hatred build, the way mercenaries work is you can have a hired one, which has a skill tree, and you can have a reinforcement one, which has an action when you do an action. And you can come into the the den and pick a person and say, become my mercenary or become my reinforcement. So you have one of each. Okay, that's how it works. 
for the mercenary, I would go with Vyana, Variana, Vyana, Vyana. Anyway, Massacre is her main ability. That just gives you stacking movement speed, which is great on a rogue. Then you go down to here and you get Cleave, which is damage. You get this, which is 1% attack speed for 5 seconds when they damage an enemy, up to 10%. You take Bloodthirst, which gives you another 10% attack speed for the duration of Bloodthirst. And then finally, Bloodlust further increases attack speed by 5%. So basically, you get a movement speed and a ton of attack speed. I think it's a no-brainer in this build. It feels really, really good. I, I haven't, I've tried a few others, but this one just feels too good to switch up right now. Then for the, the reinforcement, you've got a few options. I don't think anything is amazing. If you found a really good one, let me know. But So I picked Rahia and Crater. So they strike the ground. Each burst deals damage and pulls in enemies. The final burst stuns them. So you get crowd control and you get another way to pull in enemies on top of our aspect, which is good. And then I have that whenever you cast the dance. So I think that's a good little combo. If you, if you found one better, let me know. I've tried a few, but th this feels pretty good. But yeah, they're, they're the mercenary skills. Okay, let's talk about rune words and gems. So these are new in season six and they basically are a, they work around this offering system, do a certain thing and you get offering and then you spend it on the thing below it. So that's, you kind of attach them, do one thing, get the other. So th this is what I've been using, what I think works quite well. So first we have this, deal damage after not taking any within two seconds and you get 200 offering. This is good because we have a lot of defensives, a lot of dodge, a lot of ways to just not take damage. And then down here, we get movement speed. This is, this is great. Movement speed works really well on this build. Then we take over here, evade gives 75, and then to use it, we gain crit strike chance up to 25%. I think this is a very passive, very simple setup that doesn't take any extra brain power. You don't have to do anything crazy like purposefully take damage or purposefully, um, you know, use health potions, things like that. It's all stuff you do naturally. Then down here on the on the actual gems, I would go for emeralds for crit strike damage in the weapon, emeralds for dexterity in the armor, and then on the on the jewelry, I would go for either amulet uh, i'd go for either diamonds for resistance to all elements if you need it or skulls if you need the armor so yeah that's 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 gems and and the rune words okay now let's talk about the uh the gear stats you know the tempering all that stuff there's a leveling build so don't take it too serious don't stress it too hard just get out there and level if you get a really good item that's a good eye level with good stats on it these are stats to look for and if you do want to temper the odd thing these are things that you can look for on tempering so let's go over it if you were if you were looking for stats on gear Here's the main things. Ranks in Dark Shroud, ranks in Imbuement skills, things like that are solid. Crit Strike Chance, Crit Strike Damage, Attack Speed are always amazing, always solid. Dex works really well now. It scales really well, so it always takes Dex where you can. On the Amulet, things like Exploit and Weapon Mastery are really good. But yeah, they're, they're your main stats to look for. I wouldn't worry about too much else. You know, I wouldn't be rolling things while leveling, but if you see those stats, they're good to get. On the boots, movement speed is always great, especially in this build. And then... On your, on your tempering, I wouldn't temper much until you get to like 40 plus really, but the main things to temper is your weapons. The weapon temper, chance for your dance projectiles to cast twice. That is massive. And because we're a rogue, we have three weapons. So we can temper this. I just put this on. It's the same. You do it on all weapons, basically. Temper this on all three of your weapons. Pretty much whenever you've got solid weapons, temper this on them. It's really good. If you manage to find the, the manual for it anyway, but always get that. The other tempers you can take are like, uh, crit strike damage, crit strike chance. Um, you can get extra imbuements as a resource temper. You can get damage per dark shroud as an offensive temper. Things like that. But yeah, they're, they're the things I've been going for. It's all here if you want to look at it in more detail. But I really wouldn't put too much time into this while you're leveling. But yeah, that's that's everything. I think that's everything. I'm not going to go over a paragon board because you don't even get your paragon points till 60. And I do want to make a fully fleshed out endgame build that I've tested far into endgame. But that's not this. This is a leveling build. I, I hope this has helped. It's all here. You know, the, the, the stats, the skill tree, the, the, the mercenaries, everything's on here. The gems, the rune words. So yeah, it's all linked down below. If this has helped, do let me know down below. If, you, if you've tried it, if you like it, if you've got any questions, I will try my best to answer them as well in the comments. But yeah, that's, that's it from me. I make a ton of builds like this. So do subscribe if you want to see more. But that's it from me. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.